Um, so here are the seven different kinds, or here are seven different kinds of questions. Um, which kind is best? Uh, well, um, they're all good. Uh, cultural questions are good. It's good to ask about the culture, about the politics, about the society. Uh, lexical questions, it's good to ask about the words that you're using. Visual questions, it's good to ask about what you can see in the scene. Um, direct questions, it's good to ask what they said, what people said. Um, indirect questions, it's also good to ask what people didn't say. Um, maybe people were not telling the truth. Maybe you can see from their acting that they're very angry or very upset. Maybe you can see from the situation what is really happening is different to what people are saying. So indirect questions are also very important if you want to understand a movie. Um, that's known as subtext, by the way. Sub, sub means under, and subtext is what's happening underneath the text or underneath the story. Um, so those are indirect questions. Um, imaginary questions, um, what's going to happen next? Thinking about what happens outside the scene or after the scene is also very good. And um, personal questions, um, people like talking about themselves and thinking about themselves. So you should ask people, what do you think? What's your idea? What's your opinion? Um, or what's your experience? Where have you been? What have you done? Um, so there, there are no best questions. You need to try to ask lots of different questions and maybe try one of each. Um, so another way to think about questions then is in their function. What do the questions do? And um, some questions are survey questions. So some questions will find out information about the audience. Um, there are comprehension questions. Um, you want to check whether the audience understands. And uh, discussion questions. Discussion questions will give people something to talk about. Uh, this is another way to look at different kinds of questions. Um, another way to think about questions still is in terms of format. So um, there are different formats of question. A yes, no question, multiple choice question, matching question, and open questions. Um, uh, can you think of an example of each kind of question? Can you think of an example of a yes, no question? An example of a multiple choice question? An example of a matching question? An example of an open question? And can you think of the advantages? What are the good things about yes, no questions? What are the bad things about yes, no questions? Um, and what about multiple choice? What about matching? What about open questions? Um, so yes, no questions. Um, the good things about yes, no questions. Yes, no questions are easy to answer. People just need to say yes or no. Uh, you can also get a quick answer. If you're showing a class, if you're in a classroom showing a movie scene, which I hope we can do sometime. Um, you can answer, ask a yes, no question quickly. People put their hands up, yes or no. You can very quickly get an idea of the class's answer or their answers. Um, the disadvantage is there's not much information. A yes, no question will just tell you yes or no. Um, multiple choice. Um, the good point, this gives you some support, and you have four choices. You know the answer is one of these choices, so it will help you. You can at least guess the correct answer, and it will give you some support, some um, scaffolding, it's also called. Uh, one problem with multiple choice is that they're quite difficult to make. So it's difficult to make a multiple choice question. You need one correct answer, and you need three probably wrong answers, but the wrong answers can't be completely wrong. They've got to be a little bit wrong so that people may guess the wrong answer. Um, so they're a bit more difficult to make multiple choice. Um, matching questions um, are good because a ma in a ma matching question where you have four parts over here or four parts over here and you need to match which part, this part, this part, and which part, which part goes together with which part. When you finished it, 
everything's kind of fit together and you have a good sense of achievement. Um, and if you're showing on a screen, if you have a matching question, if you have a multiple choice question, you've kind of got one question, one idea, and four different answers. If you have a matching question on the same page, you can have four ideas and four answers. So they're quite good for getting information onto one screen. Um, and of course, matching questions are also quite difficult to make. Probably not as difficult as multiple choice, possibly. Um, open questions, and the good thing about open questions is that you can get many, many different answers from different people. Uh, they'll make people think. And the bad news is that, or the bad news for an open question, it's difficult to get feedback. If there's a question, an open question, and you have 40 people, you can't very easily get feedback from 40 people on an open question. You need to ask each person their answer because you may have 40 different answers. Um, so there, there are different, these questions are sometimes good for some things. So closed questions, um, in other words, yes, no questions, multiple choice questions or matching questions. These are very good for vocabulary. If you're trying to check whether people know words, um, then it's, it's much quicker and sometimes easier to use a yes, no question or a multiple choice question or a matching question. Um, also for comprehension, to check if people understand something, if you can use a closed question, you can quite quickly find out whether people understand what's happening. Um, open questions then um, mean that we need to think a bit more and we need to come up with our own ideas. So of course for schema building, when you're making people think about what's happening in the scene, it's probably better to have an open question where people have to say an answer or write down an answer and go through a, a thinking process. And when they're going through that thinking process, they're thinking about, hopefully, they're thinking about what they need and what will happen in the scene. Um, of course, they don't know what's going to happen in the scene, but you do. Um, and after the scene, then, a discussion, again, an open question, um, yes, no questions um, sometimes don't lead to much discussion. It's just a yes or a no, one word. Open questions hopefully can open out into a discussion among people. Um, feedback. Um, if you're in a classroom, we're not going to be in a classroom, so we need to um, we need to adapt this feedback. Not for classroom situations. Uh, we can do this online. Uh, if you are in a class, though, and you can get people to discuss answers, um, if you can walk around the class, that's quite a good way of finding, getting feedback, finding what's happening. Um, sometimes you can ask the whole class. Uh, you can pick up one student to get the answer from one person and then find out with everybody if that's the right answer. You can ask groups of people. Um, you can allow anyone to answer the question. Um, I find often if you ask people to put their hand up, nobody puts their hand up. So that's maybe less effective. Um, or, and you can also give, uh, you could give, um, use homework to find out what people's answers are. Um, that just shrunk for no obvious reason. Um, so, thinking about your movie then, this is what you need to think about. Um, what is the context of your movie, your movie scene? Where is it set? When is it set? When did the story happen? Um, what world does the movie represent? Which world does it belong to? Some movies are in the real world, some are in this world, some have an imaginary universe that they have created. Uh, what world is your movie in? Um, what's happening in the movie politically? What's happening socially? What's happening culturally? Um, what's happening to the characters emotionally or even globally? What's happening to the global politics? What's happening to the world in terms of politics, society? What's happening regionally in the area, in the country, uh, in the uh, local area? 
or personally what's happening what are the social issues for your main actor what are the emotional issues for your main actor um, think about all these things um, relationships then um, think about two of the characters in your movie scene and what is their relationship with each other um, what do they think of each other how close are they uh, is their relationship equal or does one of the people have power over the other person is it an unbalanced relationship um, is their relationship changing lots of stories are about relate relationships and the relationships change throughout the movie uh, sometimes not uh, Lexis Lexis is um, Lexis is language is grammar and vocabulary it's called Lexis uh, so kind of words were and words working together um, and English is there are many different kinds of English in different countries and different places what kind of English are they speaking in your movie um, what register are they using? Is it a formal, maybe they're in a, a workplace and they're using a workplace register. They're speaking work language, maybe they're friends, maybe they're family. Um, depending on what situation they're in, they'll use a different kind of language. Um, are they using specialist language or non-specialist language? If it's teachers in a school, they'll be talking, they'll be using teacher language. Uh, is it formal, informal, casual? Is it slang? Um, and often movies have special words that have a special meaning in that movie and no other movie. Um, so does your movie or your scene have any special words with special meanings? It probably does. Uh, and the keywords, so think about what are the keywords of your scene, what are the key phrases, um, and uh, how do you spell that? That's a useful question. Um, so the main characters, think about the main characters, who are the main characters in your movie scene? Where did they come from? What do they do? Why are they there? And what is their relationship? So there's plenty to think of. And um, plenty of questions that you could make. So uh, good luck. See you next time.